Hey everyone, welcome to the Color by Felix podcast. Today we have an amazing artist. I'm so excited to have her. Her name is Dina Brodsky. I actually followed her and saw her work years ago. That was like before, like even my Instagram was growing anywhere big. I saw her page through art featuring and she has this really cool detailed miniature paintings, which is insane it's so beautiful and i thought you you know your work is amazing so to have you on today is a pleasure and an honor thank you dina for being with us today mm -hmm. okay thank you for inviting me yeah so good to meet you we're excited to hear your story to get to know you better um also we like to give the audience uh let them know like your social media so that they can follow along with your art if they want to watch yeah um Thank you. It's just Dina Brodsky on either Instagram or TikTok. The cool. awesome, and you also have a podcast, right, Dina? I I, I do have a podcast in case uh, in case anyone still wants to hear me talk after after this podcast. It's the, the it's it's called Art Grind. Uh, um, you know where we ramble tangentially about art related, you know, uh, somewhat art related things with people we admire. Uh, awesome, yeah. cool, and um, I, I oh, go ahead, Felix. No, so so that's interesting because like um, we don't know much people doing you know what you're doing like pod, the podcast and um, and we just recently started as well so this is all new to us we're just seeing where it takes us and we want to do like I'm pretty sure like you just to see how artists think and like how they found their style or their like um, you know their journey because a lot of people back in the day they'll see the art the artist work but like they don't really get to know the artist you know much so like to have this kind of platform like this podcast is very interesting so what made you start your podcast like how did you like wanted to do that mm -hmm. um you know I, I had some friends who started it actually and they invited me for you know like they invited me as a guest and then at some point like they i guess maybe one of one of the hosts couldn't do it anymore and i was i don't know probably about seven months pregnant and they were like do you want to jump in as like the interim host um you know until you have this baby and um go on indefinite maternity leave and um and it was like my one chance like by that point i had a toddler too it was like my one chance to leave the house and have an adult conversation with you know with people that i looked up to uh, and, um, and so I did that for two months. It was great. And then I was like, all right, well, that's, that's probably it. And then, uh, COVID started a little bit after that. Um, and then after a few months of, of COVID somehow I was like, well, like, so I left New York and, you know, which is where the podcast was happening, which have people over and get them very drunk. That, that, that was really our MO. Like people <laughs> would, you know, stumble out of that podcast recording, the, um, <laughs> The, um and um the um yeah um yeah you know like like I guess they stopped recording what when COVID hit because they couldn't get people drunk and you know it was New York people were you know very scared and um them um and then I was like let's just do it on Zoom like like if if you guys aren't doing it anyway then um I want to come back on um I can you know do the organizational bits of it um and if it doesn't matter where I where I am or where everyone else is because no one's having any fun anyway right now let's just kind of take advantage of it and interview the people that we admire that live on the other side of the world uh, how did how did you guys start uh, um where we started because Felix and Sebastian are both kind of like artists and we would always like have these conversations about like art and like art business and stuff like that and we're like uh, well why don't we just record this like because other people might get something out of this too these conversations and then we're like we also want to see where other artists are at and get to get to know other people and their journeys so that's kind of how we started yeah and and there was no like like crazy like idea or crazy plan it's just very like casual we're like let's just let's just talk normally without any pressure with other artists and see where they are and just catch up and get to know people you know i feel like i've we've already so far we've interviewed what like interviewed like 25 people so far yeah i think this is episode 27 27 okay so like 
we um yeah 27 people and it's so awesome to meet all of them in person like i feel like they're like my friends now you know so like after so now you Dina, yeah, no, no pressure Dina. you have to be our friend after this <laughs> you, you, have to be our friend. you know what i might be the one person that you're interviewing who just sucks you know <laughs> the, the, um uh, but hopefully and and you're right that is the best part of it um like feel it and and actually like i um at the beginning of the summer i went to rome with um a girl that i met like like a fellow miniature artist that I met on Instagram, invited her to the podcast. And then after talking to her for an hour or two, I was like, she's amazing. <laughs> and then some, somehow we just had this idea. She's from South Africa. I'm from, you know, I'm in Boston right now. We're like, let's, let's meet in Rome and paint a bunch of miniatures. So sometimes nice. like the magical part is when like, you know, those people, it, the people you meet in like the metaverse online turn into real people that you can walk down the street with. So. Absolutely. And I think that for people listening, like, don't wait to become a successful artist to make that happen for yourself. Like there are people you might not, you know, be able to get the attention of, you know, your favorite, you know, star artists on Instagram to go hang out with you and, you know, get a coffee. But like the, there are plenty of people at all levels of art and their careers who are like, I mean, let's be honest, like, right. We're all, we're all lonely to some extent. We all would love a friend who's like, into the same stuff as us, you know, like you can always use another one of those. And so I feel like that's, like you said, the magical thing about social media is that you can find people like friendships based around similar interests are such a, such good friendships. In my opinion, you never run out of stuff to talk about, like if you're both painters or whatever, and it'll help you level up your painting career, I think, you know, so inspiring Dina, each other. Can you uh, tell us your story, okay? Because I've I've seen your work for like you were probably one of the first artists I've seen. Literally, I remember and, uh, the day Felix showed me your art, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, look at this! Look at this uh, painter on Instagram. She's so good." So you must have been doing this for a long time, huh? When did you start your account? Um, well, so so uh, your work, the, the miniatures, what shocked me is like you do so like crazy detailed work and the light is so good in your paintings, like the way you use light. And um, but it's it's very small and I've painted small before. So some people think it's could be easy because it's small, but a lot of the times smaller paintings could be a lot harder than the bigger ones. And that's, you know, I've learned that. To, and so the, for you to to paint small is is pretty crazy. So I just kind of want to know your journey when you started, you know, kind of from the beginning, uh, if you don't mind sharing your like, you know, process. Of, um, uh, I mean, the painting small I've always done. Actually the one, um, so I was, I was born in Belarus and, um, you know, my, my mother, you know, she, like her friends were like artists and musicians. She was this kind of, you know, bohemian hippie type. And at some point she took me to this little art school that a friend of hers was starting up in Minsk. And, um, and, and I remember he was, you know, he gave me this huge piece of paper. I must've been like, yeah, four or five. And he was like, you know, draw a person. And I draw this teeny tiny little person in the corner. And he's like, can you, make it draw a bigger person, you know, <laughs> like make, make it take up the whole piece of paper. So I draw like another teeny tiny person. And this goes on for like an hour. And by then he, he so what he told my mom is she's unteachable. And that was kind of the end of my um, attempts at art education for the next, I'd say 15 years. So, um, I, I actually wasn't um, I, like, I wasn't one of those people who drew since they were a child. Like, like I, um, I, I don't know, I read, um, I collected various kinds of insects and categorized them. Those, those were like my childhood hobbies. Um, I bred frogs. Um, and, um, and, and then I only really started, um, I started painting again my first semester at university. Um, and only because I wanted to um, drop out and hitchhike around Europe the moment I turned 18. Um, like, like, like somehow that was, that was the plan. Um, and, um, and, and so I was kind of there to, you know, keep my parents, my, my parents are amazing, by the way, they put up with so much of my, you know, kind of bullshit through, uh, you know, kind of like saying that I want to drop out of college or I, I don't want to go to college. I want to hitchhike around Europe instead. Um, but their one condition was, um, the, um, the, the, you know, I try university, like the one school that I got into for one semester. And then I turn 18 and you know, they're like, you, you can mess up your life as much as you want after that. So I was um, thinking, what, what can I do for the next six months that would, you know, um, that would be easy 
and just take up as little, you know, brain space as possible. So I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll take an art class. And, and it was like, you know, how they say that like with, with heroin, you get addicted, like, like, but by the third time, like it was even faster than that. Like, like the, um, like, like, like I, I don't know, by the end of my first homework assignment, I was completely hooked. Like I no longer wanted to drop out of anywhere. And I actually no longer, like, I no longer wanted to do anything except this. And yeah. I was, what was do you remember that first assignment like what it was or yeah yeah I do it was a, it was a charcoal self-portrait um it's 18 by 24 it was terrible because I couldn't draw um like like I was also because I never did it before I was the worst person in you know my class um like like, like there was everyone and then and then there was me like all the way like over to the bottom and the side and so I think I spent maybe the first two years just trying to catch up with everyone else um so I'd be interesting with that little um, note is like, do you, since you said, right, you started off as a, like the quote unquote worst in the class, I guess, like, do you think that talent, artistic talent is just a matter, like, do you think you're born with it? Or do you think it's just a matter of like the people who have more passion and pursue it and actually put in the work? Uh, I think it, it's like the, what people call talent is, um, it's for rookies. It's completely unimportant. Like there's mm. a ton of people who, how, you know, like, like what talent, you know, like, like what means an art is just, you know, as kids, it's just like someone is, has better hand-eye coordination. Um, and that person tends to do, you know, tends to get kind of rewarded. Like, you know, people are like from, I think from a very young age, like that kid was a slightly better hand-eye coordination. They're like, oh my God, he draws so well, or she draws so well. And then they, because they're getting positive feedback, they also, some of, some of those kids will spend more time doing it and then they get even better. And then maybe their parents are like, oh, they're so talented. Let's send them to an art class. So by the time, you know, that kid is like in high school, they've already had just a lot more practice. But I, yeah, I, I think um, talent, inspiration, like all of that, it's just these, like they're almost meaningless words. Like, 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 uh, like 99% of it is just like the willingness to kind of work for it. Right. And do you think that we like to put those words on things because it gives people maybe an excuse to uh, not pursue something themselves. Or is um, that me being too harsh? No, but I'm 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 also harsh about this. Um, the, um, because I, I feel like talent is almost like it's like a demeaning word. Like you have so much talent. I'm like no, I don't. I work for it. Like the um, right. The, and and a ton of people that I actually knew at university who um you know who who were they were better hand eye coordinated they they were better than me um but they didn't have like as strong of a safety net as I did like I you know had parents who were sort of you know like like supportive of what I did like I came from a middle class family where if I failed um I could always like go back and live at home and a lot of my my friends that was a state school like I think they just didn't have that luxury of like they could you know they had families that you know for various reasons like they wouldn't be able to like go back to if shit hit the fan and I think I didn't realize how in a way like privileged I, I, I was like that that word also gets overused but like like I didn't realize like in my head from 18 to 25 I was like well I'm paying my way through school I'm supporting myself you know via art from a very young age like it like I think I like the story of I did it all by myself but now looking back at it I was like well yeah, I did it all by myself, but like I always had like a net to fall into if things went wrong. And a lot of the people that didn't got the first job that had health insurance after college, and that was a full time job. And, you know, and for a few years, they would like come home at, you know, seven in the evening and still paint. And then, you know, and, and, and like a lot of them just gave up because it, because it's, it's really, really hard. Like you can do that in your 20s. Um, and then like, if you you know in your 30s like if you have a family like you just like like like, like I can see why people drop it no? mm -hmm. yeah I think that's an important bit of nuance there I think that I really like that point you just made because it's like both are true right it's like if it's not all about privilege and life circumstance and it's also not all about hard work you know it's like it's a combination and your own factors are different and you have to make that decision for yourself. Cause I did the same thing. I was working full-time in New York city, coming home every night, you know, writing and recording music. And it was exhausting, like you said. And it's just like, 
you have to determine for yourself whether that is worth it or not. So I think you're right. Yeah. To like make these overall statements of like, Oh, if you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. Like, you know, maybe there's um, some truth to that, but it's not. I, no, I, I think, um, I think that's actually true when you're young. Like if you want it bad, like you're young, you're not taking care of aging parents or small children. And right. then at some point, like when you are, it just becomes like, like, yes, I guess you could still do it, but it becomes so hard. And this is actually someone said on like, like our podcast, um, the, um, she said it was this woman, she's a very successful artist, but she said the art world favors those who have time to paint, right? And um, and like, however you get that time, like I almost feel it's like you buy, beg or steal it. Huh? Um, mm -hmm. but, but I think the people that are kind of starting off with just, I don't know, let's say a trust fund will have like, three years to build up a body of work and go network at the right parties and you know the, the, um is it instead of instead of do, doing what you did sebastian which is working a full-time job and then coming home to make music at night and you know like like like, like you, you can do that and it's like very admirable that you did but it like it, like can you imagine doing it for 15 years 20 30 so? exactly yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's like, yeah, I mean, you can basically like, you, you, it's a really quick metric. You can be like, um, oh, I don't know. Like there's a reason why you can, you can see that there's more, uh, say artists in New York or in London than in rural Maine, right. Or whatever, you know, it's like economic circumstances give people less time and, uh, things like that. No, but then people move to New York and then it's it's also like kind of a, like, like I had this sort of unique set of circumstances that allowed me to stay there, like mm -hmm. where I was living in this semi squat situation where like for a while, like the whole building was actually empty. It's it was great. It was in the middle of Manhattan and, you know, um, and, and I was paying less rent than you probably would in like, you know, in rural Maine. But I think if it wasn't for that apartment and that situation lasting as long as it did, um, I, I like, like kind of working the way people do in New York and making art like, like, you know, also seems really, really hard. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was also gonna ask you about like, um, how you manage like having a family and art and like how how is that and I guess yeah I guess let's start there <laughs> I manage it badly I manage it very badly but <laughs> I um um I feel like half half the time I feel like I'm either failing a parenting in some reasonably major way um or you know like or failing at painting uh, in some reasonably major way. Um, and then there's like the five other balls that are always up, up in there, like the, um, th that I'm also, you know, one of which is like always just about hitting the ground. Um, I, I think right now what, um, so, um, so my, my magic skill, right, um, is I don't entirely need as much sleep as most people. Like, like, I don't need as little sleep as I thought I did. Like, like, like I've had the first baby and, and he was just up every hour and a half. And it turned out that I couldn't do that. But, um, so, I, um, but like other people need eight hours. I need like five or six. And I think that that helps a lot. Um, so, and right now, honestly, the only reason I probably have like a proper career is because, um, me and my, my, well, ex-husband like my, my kid's dad we split up and for a while I was just you know single parenting like that that's how I spend the pandemic like I you know the like the this is actual lockdown where like I um just you know um single parenting two small kids while trying to work like five different freelance jobs and but then after that their their dad just I don't know he stopped going through whatever he was going through and he started to want to spend time with them and so right now sometimes he'll just take them like like right now, like he, for, for like during the summer, he takes them for, you know, two weeks out of each month. So we do 50, you know, like, like we do joint custody for the summer and it's kind of amazing. <laughs> like the, um, just because I do have time to, like I have time, time to paint and I also have like the, um, you guys don't have kids, right? You look very young. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, no. So part of what they, the, the children eat is like, the brain space to come up with new ideas like like there's you know like parenting is 
in many ways, actually, that's not true. Parenting's terrible. Uh, kids are amazing. Um, <laughs> the, I was going to say parenting is amazing. Parenting's not amazing. Uh, kids are wonderful. Um, kids are magical and curious and they change all the time. And like they're, they keep you on your toes. And like, like I'm amazed a hundred times a day at like the various things that they get up to. Uh, but like parenting really blows, like like the kind of relentlessness of full, full on, you know, like like full time, especially like pandemic parenting. Uh, um, and, um, the, and I think a lot of what most people need to come up with new ideas is just like, it's a time for your brain to just meander. Uh, yeah, I totally know. Um, and, and I think once their dad started taking them and like, like I said, like, like I, started having like it wasn't just a time to paint it was time for like like my brain to be empty enough or free enough or whatever to be like all right this is like the next step like either painting wise or business wise like this is the next piece of the puzzle so yeah i i, I basically the only the only thing that comes close to balance is like is, is this divorce, which I generally wouldn't recommend as like a way of finding, you know, like, like work life, <laughs> work life balance. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to okay. say something. Um, something. I'm just going to have nannies raise my kids so I can make art. Perfect. I'm kidding. <laughs> you better find a sugar mama that can pay those bills. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, that is a good plan. Art advice. Um, so basically what I was going to say is that what you were saying about like the uh, free space in your brain to like create, um, I think that goes like hand in hand with what we were talking about earlier. It's like, that's a luxury that most people don't have, you know, because everyone's trying to like pay their bills and go to work and take care of their family and cook and clean and blah, blah, blah. So like, I feel like our society it just makes it so that it's there's barely any time just to like sit down and take a breath which is the time that you, artists like need to be creative I feel like any human needs that time to be creative um yes and actually when we do have time to sit down and take a breath our instinct is to pick up our phone and like check what happened in like the internet universe and that's the opposite of like that headspace like the um like the um like like because then it just floods you with a zillion things none of which you really needed to know by the way the like the um and like you know and all of which will actually make you like a little bit more anxious and a little bit like less free and um and and because these like devices are always around us like, you know, because they play music and take photos and, you know, the, um, and we go, like, we go into that world, like the phone world to make money and to be entertained and, you know, the, um, so, like, it's so useful and so destructive to this exact thing that, Andrea, that you were talking about, like, like the, the brain space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so, so important to make that time. You have to, again, like, you have to, even to this day, like, I even would have to like find time to sit down and, and sketch you know my ideas or whatever and I have to make sure I don't have my phone certain t times of the day or whatever like you know because you're responding or doing something like you were saying business stuff and it's so distracting and so like you learn and practice to stay away like from being too much on on the internet you know and uh when when you do sketch you you actually feel so good afterwards you you're like man this is I got something good out of this and I feel great, you know, and I did not, I never once wasted time, you know, feeling like I wasted time when I was sketching, you know, so. Um, I, Worsh, I bet you've felt like you've wasted time, like, like every, every day, if you let yourself get sucked into the phone spiral, uh, but, but here's the thing, we don't, as a society, like this thing is so disruptive like I, I don't think we have like the the mental or physical weapons to fight it the, like I have an app on my phone that turns off the internet for like eight hours a day and that's that's like the, the ways that I've um because like I know like willpower is not enough the, yeah yeah uh, and and all and also like we tend to feel guilty when we just sit down and do nothing like mm -hmm. the 
um like when we're not working i think that like like or, or at least like not doing and i don't know if you have this or maybe there's just something wrong with me but do, do you, you know what i mean if you sit down yeah, and just sure. do something just for yourself that uh, you're like, oh, but I, I didn't get anything done during that time and it took me till like this year where i was like oh like if i let myself just wander like that like like, like not do anything that leads to a painting sale or like you know a to-do list um then i actually tend to come up with like better ideas that pay off like a little bit down the line so. yeah, yeah so. gary v and the rock and sophia amoruso appear in little devil suits on your shoulder when you uh <laughs> when you aren't doing anything and they tell you you got to be hustling bro you got to be building you know? <laughs> I, um, be networking yeah, that <laughs> um, you know, I don't even know who these people are because I think I'm like a generation older than you, but they sound like complete douchebags. I think they're, I think, you know, it, it's like what you, what you're really getting at, I think is a big issue for everyone globally right now is that like, we're so not to sound like some kid who just read his first, you know, political book or whatever, but I just think we're so trained into this production mindset you know this capitalist mindset of like i mean just right look how hard it is to survive nowadays even compared to a few generations ago it's like your everything you earn uh, is going to your bills i i didn't know sebastian um i i didn't grow up here you know like 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 i spent my childhood yeah. in a capitalist country it was so much worse right, like right, the, right. um is it um like, like like capitalism might suck in a lot of ways but it's a lot better than communism which was kind of you know like right. like i grew up in the soviet union back when you know back, like like before the collapse not not like sure. it got better after and I'm, the not, I'm not proposing that as an alternative i'm just basically saying just in terms of like you know now compared to say the 90s like how much how hard it is for somebody to just get by i'm not saying like let's throw out the baby with the bathwater and try communism i'm just saying like it is what it is. We have to work very hard to pay our bills, you know, and it's, um, I'm not saying I'm going to change that system. I'm just saying that it's like, um, but then like, you know, think of like 200 years ago, you would have been, or at least, I don't know, I would have been, maybe you would have been, you're the descendant of an aristocrat the, where, um, the, uh, where, where you would be, I don't know, philosophizing at the court of, you know, some Duke, but um, most of us would have been farmers. Like most, you know, I would have died in childbirth um as a um like, like yeah. yeah yeah like like basically a few generations ago not that many like four generations ago i would have just been dead by now like the i would have popped out a few babies one of them would have had like a big head and that would have been the end of me um like i i actually feel like we have um i i feel like in a way this is a better time like i mean even with everything that's going on like if um I think this is a better time to be an artist than and try to sort of make a living that way than ever before. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I agree I, with you I, in, in a certain dynamic, but I just I think that we're both well, let's not let's not make this about a debate club, right? But yeah, <laughs> I just let's move on, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm saying. But I just think mental space, right, is like even back in the day, like I 100 percent agree with you. You didn't have the same access to medicine and you know, you were or social mobility or anything, right? But it's like I just mean in terms of like the average person's like what you were saying with social media and stuff like there's money on the line for people to keep us distracted looking at stuff on our screen so like in terms of just sanity and mental like emptiness and relaxation like it back in the day you might have worked really hard but then the sun goes down and you're just kind of sitting around like it's not it wasn't these like always like the stress level i guess is what i'm saying of like a modern job where you're like always in a screen there's always notifications going off and you're on you're on the timetable even after you clock off that kind of stuff i mean arguably like the screen thing is i mean it's new enough and we're not managing it very well like as just not us specifically but as a society we're not managing it very well but i think the you know like like when i think of what life was really like you know and like even you know like before, whatever the 19th century 18th um you know there um there would have constantly like so i think people would have 12 kids but only two of them would survive um you would live in like 
you know, basically everyone would live in one room. I don't know, you did, like, can you imagine living in one room with your 12 relatives, some of whom are dying of old age and some are, you know, your children succumbing to, you know, various diseases. I, I'm not sure you would have had that much more mental space. And just, 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 right. just saying, like, if you, you know, the um, screens are terrible, um, but so was life for most people. And I guess we kind of forget, and so is life in a lot of countries right now, which is other thing. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. totally yeah all right well we, we can leave that there no worries yeah, yeah yeah it's just like we happen to be in like a place that you know like we can i don't know almost like construct our own life like, yeah. like and and that's magical yeah and, and it's like it's again it's like we have the, there is positives and negatives in the time we're living now and I agree with you on the, the part where artists have a lot more opportunity to make a living as an artist because of the internet and everything. But a person still has to know how to manage their time well because it's a person's choice in the end, you know? And so whatever choices you make, as soon as you wake up matters, you know? And so like you, you just, there's a lot of distraction. The time you, you run around trying to make money, whatever, but it's also, you have to... Um, you have to balance everything. You have to learn how to, you know, and no one can really teach you. It's kind of like a, you have to make, you have to have that discipline. You have to train it. It's like training your art skills. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, like how you train your like art skills and you come become better at it over time. It's kind of like discipline. You, you just have to, you know, get serious with like your scheduling and whatever, and just like focus on that, you know, and don't let anything get in the way. You know what I mean? Um, I want to do, I wanted to continue and ask you, um, so we left off with your story and you said, um, you, oh, yeah, you left off with you being not as great as an art student in your uh, class. <laughs> Can you continue from there? What happened? No, uh, you left off at getting addicted to it. Getting addicted to it. Then and by the way, I wasn't not a great art student. I was the best art student. I, um, because I worked really, really hard <laughs> and I would like, and I never, back then, I never needed any sleep at all. Um, I was just a terrible, I guess what you would call, you know, a terrible artist as a student. I was a great student. Like, like, like I did every homework assignment over and over and over again. I, you know, took copious notes. Like it was the first time in my life I was interested in just being in class like 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 I think you know before that I um well I I, I didn't attend all that many classes in high school um like like I think I was one of these like kind of under underachieving um the um young young people and all of a sudden I was like I I want it like it was the first time where I wanted to be there and I was so hungry for information and um and it was the first time like, like and I was kind of in, in love like you know I was um like like for me the the painting was almost like falling in love with a person where where it, where for a while I had this very long honeymoon period where it's like I, painting can do no wrong uh painting has no flaws and I'm totally willing to sacrifice my life to this thing yeah, yeah. yeah it was like an I, like an unhealthy um romantic relationship actually <laughs> Yeah, I feel you though. I feel you. Um, and uh, so, okay, so you fell in love with it. And then so you started practicing it and, and, and learning. Uh, and you, you are you painting with oils now? Or what's your main medium? Who knows? I, um, Everything. Um, every, I, so I was trained as an oil painter. Um, so, so the problem was all of it was being in love with painting at um, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst in 1999 was actually that they had this extremely conceptual based program and teachers who just like thought that everything that I was doing was like e extremely regressive and, you know, um, and, 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 and boring and, you know, um, the, so um, I was, you know, like, like there's, so there's one teacher I followed around like, like a puppy where like, you know, like, like, like I probably followed him home you know, at some point. It's like, I, I think I, I need to know more. Like, are you free right now? But, um, but um, I didn't actually have like a proper like art education until graduate school. And um, I applied to one place and it was kind of like my dream place. And I think if I had not been accepted there, I just wouldn't have gone but I was accepted and the teachers there were phenomenal and I don't know um and it, like I was still in that state where I like I I was still in the honeymoon honeymoon period <laughs> yeah 
That's uh, awesome. I bet that's so inspiring because I remember taking for fun to some art classes and I was just, I, I know that feeling you're talking about. It's like nothing else is as exciting to study as just being in the studio to, with a teacher showing you some techniques and you're playing, messing around like a kid, you know, playing with paint. I think that's just so fun and exciting. Um, so like you, you went to school and then from there, did you, did you already was, um, when did you open up your Instagram or your social media pages and when, what made you want to, you know, pursue that, that part with your art, you know? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm older than you guys are. You're not even millennials. Are you Gen Z? Like the, or the, um, I, I'm 1993. Felix is, they're both 90. 1990. Yeah. I, I can't remember where that like, you know, where's that generational cutoff, uh, you know, cutoff is, but, um, uh, but in any case, so uh, I, when I was, when I was studying, there was no social media or phones, or I, I like remember when the internet wasn't actually a thing, but, um, but um, social, social media, so I, um, when I met, um, well, my, I guess now ex-husband, he, um, he's, he's a tech guy and he made me a website and the website had, or he redid my website, and um, he said, you know, there was like the CV and where I could put my work, and then there was um, a page, and he was like, I'll hook that up, I'll make, you know, like to an Instagram account, and if you don't want to update the website, but you have something new, you can just put it up on the Instagram account, and it'll appear on the website, and so, and I was like, oh, this is magical, <laughs> the, like, the, so, um, so I, I, I actually didn't think of it as a business tool, I thought about it as, like, a way of not having, of, like, updating my website without having to use WordPress, the, um, the, or, you know, whatever, whatever it was back then, um, and then I, I remember I was, um, and, and, and like, I I think my 12 year old students at the time, like, like one of my jobs was teaching a bunch of 12 year olds, which I was terrible at, like I, you know, because I have no, I'm, I'm you know, um, I have no authority, um, even over my own children, never mind other people's. Uh, but they were, you know, I remember they were like, you know, you should use it. I follow you on Instagram, like, the, and, and I was like, what's that? And they said, um, you know, it's kind of like Facebook, but without all the stupid words. The, and I was like, oh God, the, um, the, you know, who, who, you know, who are these people? Like they, they, you know, Facebook doesn't have that many words. Um, um, but then like a few years later, I was, so I, I, I had this account for a while. Um, and then at some point I, and I didn't think of it as anything more practical than like an easy website update. And then I was staying at a friend's in, um, in Spain. And I, I was in this phase where I was like, I need to have a career. Um, it was after the, the few years after the economic crisis of, you know, um, 2009. So, so, so I actually caught the tail end of the old gallery system where I would make work, sell it through a gallery, it would sell out. And then I had money to, you know, last me you know, while, while I made another body of work and that worked great for like a few years. And I got very, you know, lucky, like, like I found a gallery very young and, and they took care of me and I, I could kind of count on that income. And I put myself through grad school on, you know, those, those solo shows. And then, um, and, and, and then the recession hit. And then all of a sudden, like I could have a show and that gallery went out of business. My New York gallery also went out of business. Uh, everyone else's gallery also went out of business. And then uh, and the places that were willing to show my work, I would have a show and nothing would sell. Um, so all of a sudden it stopped being kind of a reliable, you know, way to make a living. And, you know, and I dealt with, a, I think like a lot of other people where I panicked and took on like 10 part-time jobs. Um, and so, um, but, but I was kind of in this phase where I was like, I, I was failing with galleries and work wasn't selling. I, and I was like, I'll do everything. I'll redo my website. I'll apply to a bunch of grants. I'll apply to like every gallery. And then, you know, maybe I'll start putting stuff up on Instagram. And this is maybe 2014. The, um, the, the, um, and um, so I did all, all of that stuff. Um, like, like I went on this trip to Spain and for a few hours a day, I would do all of this businessy stuff, which, um, I hated doing like, like it's, it's, you know, like the art is the art business. If, especially if you're not good at it, it's really, really boring. <laughs> um, and I wasn't good at it. 
So I applied to every grant and I got rejected from all of them. And I applied to every gallery and like no one got back to me and no one was really looking at my website. But Instagram, um, I just, I think I tweaked the way that I was presenting these miniatures. Like I was just, you know, like posting them the way that you would for a website. Um, and I started, and I was like, well, no one can tell how big they are. Like everyone's looking on their phone. And so I think I saw some, um, it was actually the girl that I ended up going to Rome with a few months ago. Like I, I found the hashtag miniature and her work floated up to the top and I was making little round miniatures and she, you know, and I had like 600 followers and she was making little round miniatures and she had like a hundred thousand followers that, and I was like, well, this is, you know, <laughs> like, like what's she doing different though? And, um, and I realized that she was um, presenting her work. Her name is Lorraine Lutz, by the way, she's amazing. You guys should interview her. She's like awesome right. artist, awesome person. Um, but she would put like her paintbrushes or her pencils, like, you know, so people could see how small they were. And so I was like, all right, well, let me try that. Let me present it in context, like just, you know, with like on my pad, you know, like, like my work was oil. So it was just a bunch of like my oil painting tools. And I think once people, it was before it became algorithmic. And once people saw what they were actually looking at, like, like they, they could get a feel for it as an object. Um, like it started you know, growing very quickly and getting, you know, shared and reshared and um, all these like huge influencer accounts that were run by like 15 year olds in countries I've never heard of were like, oh my God, it's a miniature. You know, but, like, um, we know those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like various just opportunities started to drift in like very quickly, like, like from, from that. And, um, and I was so amazed by this that I was like, all right, well, maybe this is something I should take more seriously. And, um, and I had work in my studio, I just rephotographed all of it. And then it became algorithmic, right about when I had my first, uh, my first boy, and the one who didn't sleep ever, and, and was just up all night every night. And like, babies are not boring, but being up all night trying to like get a baby to go to sleep over and over again is really boring. And I think I was just going insane from lack of sleep. So I started, um, and I, I couldn't read. Like, like I'm a huge reader, but I was, I was just so tired. I couldn't keep track of like a storyline. And I spent way too much time on Instagram because it was like the lowest common attention denominator. Like, like it's just a bunch of stuff coming at you. But, um, but I started keeping track of like the statistics because I'm a dork and the analytics. And then I was like, oh, it's an algorithm. Like, you know, like if it's an algorithm, then like it's an AI, it's evolving. I can, you know, it's trying to tell me something. Um, I can talk back. And like the way that I would talk back is just sort of like trying to figure out what it wanted. And like, I never changed my work, but I changed the way that I presented it based on, you know, what I felt like the, you know, the algorithmic beast wanted to eat. And um, the so true. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's good. That little point right there. I think that that's even true to today, like that people always like, I, I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, like, the algorithm blah 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 but it's like it's just you have to try different stuff mm -hmm. um, you have you have to kind of learn like learn the the way the new updates are just learn the the and like you were saying to and presented it in a different like a don't change your work but presented it in a different way a little bit you know and because i remember at that time i used to post videos time lap videos for like a minute long and they're just like one shot no angles just one shot of me painting, you know, the whole image. And uh, those got boring because it's people don't usually watch a whole minute. So then I just do little clips and that changed the whole game, you know? So it's like, you just have to present it and learn to present it in a different way and kind of keep updated, keep yourself updated with like how these algorithms work, right? What would um, you say? I mean, I, um... Like, so I actually, this is kind of part of what I, you know, started doing right before the pandemic. So I actually teach a class about like, you know, the Instagram algorithm specifically for artists because, because so many people, I think so many 
artists whose work is much better than mine and that I really admire ended up kind of lost in, you know, this kind of COVID, post-COVID, everyone's gallery shut down again, the ones that didn't shut down for, you know, in 2009. Um, and then people were sort of try had to figure it out on their own. And um, I, I, I don't know, I'm like, 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 I think I'm basically like the Instagram witch, like every time they change something, like, um, like, they don't need to make an announcement about it, like within a few days, I'm like, like, all right, I think I know what they did. They're either going to tell people or not tell people, but like, here's how to adapt to it. And I'm assuming eventually there'll be some things that I won't be able to like, you know, hack. But for, for now, it's the, like, like for now, I can still keep up with whatever, whatever it is. So. Mm -hmm. so you're right now, like um, you started Instagram and then it started picking up for you. And uh, did you have, you said, you had some galleries, but then they went out of business and then you didn't have any more galleries. Now you have your social media and that picked up. Is that your main, like, is, is the, do you treat that as like a gallery more than the physical? Or? I mean, yes. So I still work with galleries. Like I, you know, show and there's um, a gallery in New York that I've really, really liked working with. And they're, you know, like just she, the woman who runs it, uh, she's, wonderful and honest and you know just just sort of like a good person to work with but overall um I mean, I mean I don't know so I'm a single parent I all of a sudden like I can't live in a squad I you know need to be somewhere with like a good public school system and kids are just expensive and all so after me and my me and my kids dad split up um all of a sudden I was like oh my god life is really good. like life with two kids is if I want to not worry about money then I just need to make a lot of it. Um, and I like none of the galleries that I work with would be, would, would be able to just sort of kind of provide that kind of, like if, if a gallery would just come and take care of me, I think I'd probably take that. <laughs> um, but I, I like, honestly, like I kind of need, I don't know, like, money for all, all the stuff, like, like all the stuff you need as an adult, health insurance and daycare and, you know, the, um, but also just, I think I always treated money like it's not important because, um, you know, because when I was on my own, like I had a lifestyle where I just didn't like, like even in New York, I really didn't need much. And like, I always had enough. And then with the kids, I realized that I can either spend all my time worrying about finances or I can make enough where I don't, you know, where I'm just not worried. And, um, and then I was like, you know, there's so many other things to worry about. Like, I don't want to worry about money. <laughs> but, um, so, so yeah, I treat it as a gallery. Like I treat it to, you know, I sell work, fill classes, um, it basically whatever I needed to do at any given moment. So, mm -hmm. so what, what would you say is like, and for people listening, like go check out her art business class, but what would you say like is one of the changes that you've noticed Instagram make lately and like something that you could give like a pointer or something like that? Um, so there's a bunch of things that used to be important, like hashtags that are just no longer all that important. Like, like so hashtags will only extend your reach if the post already has high engagement. So basically if you have like a limited, so, so okay, a few things, right? One is you do not need to spend more than 20 minutes a day on, like if you're on Instagram for over 20 minutes a day, it's too much time to spend on Instagram like the, um, and you don't need to think about Instagram for over 20 minutes a day. Like it's a tool, um, you don't want your tool using you. Like it's also a tool that's very addictive and it wants you to check it all the time. And you know, the, um, but, but basically they've entirely, and like, I don't, I don't like this by the way, but they've like over the last few months, they've entirely leaned into like the TikTok algorithm, which, um, which means that, um, so, so, so what it used to be, right. Is that, um, like, you made a post and it would show it to about 10% of your following. And based on that 10, you know, how that 10% responded, it would like kind of open it up like a funnel and show it to more and more people. And over the last few months, I think they narrowed the base of that funnel and expanded the top. 
right? Mm -hmm. So now they'll show it to like 1% of your followers when you first make, make that post. But then, it, and then if that 1% re reacts strongly, then they'll show it to 2%, 4%, 10%. And then it has the potential kind of like TikTok to go a lot more viral than ever but it also has the potential to flop and not get seen by anyone in a way that like, you know, wasn't happening a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, um, and so like these changes, like we talked about this earlier, um, you just have to in a, in, like not have that impact you and your art, but like still do be creative, have fun with your art, but just, adjust the way you you know present it right you're you're would constantly have to like learn how to adjust work with the system but not have it control us right i mean so i guess one of the reasons that i don't like this current thing is like so you guys will you know have figured it out will figure it out like like you know um um but even you because you're young right and you, you're young and you're scrappy and you adapt and you know the like that but um uh, the um the target demographic that instagram is sort of like trying to get right now isn't even you it's like the 12 to 15 year olds and so kind of like this platform which you know like we're presumably on it because the whole art world is on it but um and so you know like all of our collectors and gal you know like and i don't know probably the same for you like like i think it's probably like a huge like you guys have a huge following it's probably just enormously beneficial in every possible way but so um like every creator and every artist and all of these cool people were on it and who are not 12 to 15 but what it's the, the people whose attention it's trying to keep are like like the young teenagers and it's not going to work those people are going to go like jump to tiktok anyway um but it's going to like you guys will adapt i'll you know presumably adapt but then like a lot of the people i work with are um artists who've been around for a really long time and they're they got incredibly good at making art they're wonderful artists and now all of these wonderful artists who are maybe some of them are like in their 60s 70s now have to all of a sudden become creators of short form videos that appeal to 12 to 14 year olds because that's what drives you know that's what drives the algorithm so, mm. and yeah, and yeah. i'm resentful of that because it's not a skill that like people you know like it's, it's having to learn a new skill that is counterintuitive for a lot of you know for a lot of people and then like the and the payoff for Instagram, I feel like it's Instagram being, they think they're being long-sighted, but they're actually being short-sighted. And like the last few months, there's been so many changes that it just feels like they're scrambling. Like, like it feels like they don't actually have a clear direction. They're like, let's try this way to compete with TikTok and that other way to compete with TikTok. Yeah, yeah I feel like the changes are happening like faster and faster. <laughs> Well, but not like so for a few years before that from 2018 to probably like, I don't know, January 2021, like things would change but like, it was one factor that was just a kind of, you know, it's an AI so it was just teaching itself via that one factor and it was it like it was changing but it was changing slowly, it was possible to keep up with. And um, it, like, and it made sense. Like, at least to me, it made sense. And now, is they're like, let's try this, you know. <laughs> the, the, um, and and you're right. Like, like right now, they're just. It, it feels like the company's is just scrambling and and making poor decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So, as a teacher, what what is it that makes you um, is it, like, what is it that I guess makes you want to teach these Instagram for artists courses? Is it um that you want to help people just get their stuff out there or that you see that the algorithm can mess with people and you want to kind of empower people or you know honestly it's just the one thing i can teach better than everyone else right like i'm like a reasonably good painter but there's a ton of people who are reasonably you know like who paint as well as i do but have also been teaching for enough years that they also became really good teachers and like i feel like nobody needs me to teach painting um so when i was trying you know like like thinking of what to teach i was like what can i teach that i act like i know more about and i'm better than and then you know like 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 then the other people teaching this and i checked out like a few of the other you know the people that 
kind of try to teach this stuff. So Instagram is meta, whatever. They're very vague about the algorithm. And so as a result, a lot of the information that's out there, if you just Google, you know, Instagram for artists, it's just really terrible information. So I Googled it and, and I was like, this, this sucks. All these articles suck. They're giving bad advice. The hashtags they're recommending are bad hashtags. Uh, you know, like, 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 no, you know, like if I, it's the one thing that I can, I know more about than Google does, right? Google know, knows more about everything than, you know, than everyone. But um, the, uh, like, it was something that I couldn't find good information about. And then it turned out that like, I just, you know, had it. Uh, um, so I, I teach one more class now that I also, that, that I actually love teaching to a point where, um, like where I think at some point I might stop teaching the Instagram algorithm thing and just do this one because it's been so much fun and like, 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 like it's just teaching the things that I love to do. I don't actually love the Instagram algorithm, by the way, like, like it's, it's, it's a hard thing to love, the, but I've been teaching a sketchbook class and that I adore and it gives me a chance to do more sketchbooks and kind of play with, you know, play, like play with stuff more um, like, like just uh, basically do the stuff I felt guilty about doing for myself. And now I'm like, oh yeah, but now I'm going to be teaching this class. So this is research. Mm -hmm. That's great. And do you think that like, say in a world where your entire income came from, you know, canvas sales or something, would you still teach? Is it something that's like really core to your identity? You know, God, a year ago, I would have said no. And now I, Yes, probably. I, I, like I, pro I would probably drop the Instagram algorithm one just because it's, I think at some point I'm gonna at some point I'm gonna age out of it, right? Like at some point it's gonna evolve in in a way that like is only intuitive for the current fifteen year olds. But um, the sketchbook class, I like the people that I've met while teaching that um, are like my you know this is my tribe like this is my my, my sort of people so I think I'd probably keep keep doing that so, so what made you made you want to teach you know the sketchbook class like how did you get into that what what gave you an idea um, you know I've been playing with the idea for probably about two years and then I um, and then at, at COVID um, for for like most of 2022, I'd say it, it, like the um, like I had like every variant at every vaccine and every variant. I'm just I'm like collecting them. The, the, um, like like at this point, I should have every single antibody to COVID known known to man. And like, but every time a new you know it mutates, I think I just get like the next you know the next one. But um, and and um, so so um, after like. And like the last time I had it, it was just like getting a booster shot. It wasn't a big deal. But one of these times that I had it um, went on for months. And so I couldn't really like do all that much. I mean, like I was working and I was taking care of the kids, but like life just got a lot less fun. Right. And like, I wasn't going out much and I wasn't, you know, it's winter and I wasn't, pay I wasn't doing anything that I actually, you know, liked outside um and and it also messed up my concentration and like somehow I couldn't like I, I I couldn't finish a proper painting either so I ended up messing with my sketchbook a lot and then at some point um my, my, my kids were with their dad for a week and um I was just completely by myself and I like I think that one week I wasn't teaching I wasn't really working and I was like well let me just take take a week to play and the um and then I was like well I, and then I, I think maybe I posted something on Instagram and someone was like will you ever teach a class like this and just on like off the bat I was like you know what yeah I'm actually starting to teach a class you know teach this class next month and this woman was like great how can I like register and pay for it so I had my first student and then I was like oh my god I've got to put the class together <laughs> you know the, <laughs> And then I just spent like I've been keeping sketchbooks for you know for 22 years like it's something that like I know like I guess it's, it's like the other thing like I'm you know I know a lot about this and I know a lot about how to like start start a habit maintain a habit I know all the other good sketchbook well not all but I know a lot of like the the 
good sketchbook people out there. Um, and so it felt like it was a world that I was fascinated by and loved and knew a lot about. And I just went into like, I spent the rest of that week in this like rabbit hole of like, you know, looking up my favorite historical painter sketchbooks and reading as much as possible and like trying to structure a class. And, um, and, and yeah, and then I just like started, you know, like, like the first time I taught it, I think I woke up at four in the morning the night before in like a cold sweat being terrified that I would like mess up. Um, the, um, but um, it, it turned out to be like the best thing that I've ever taught. Like the first time I was just like legitimately thrilled to be teaching, like not doing it to make a living, but just doing it because I loved it. That's cool, really cool. Yeah. Um, my, my students from that class, by the way, they kept like, it was like a three session, like one month long class and they keep going without me. Like, like they formed this little group and like, you know, sometimes they include me on their mailing list when they're, when they're getting together, but it makes me so happy that they, you know, like they don't need me to do this anymore. That's, like, like that's what it's all about, I think, is that community and yeah, like, you know, growing together as artists. I think I'm, I'm somebody who teaches as well on like social media and that's like, I found that I really love it because it's like, you know, you get to see people's progress and you get to. Uh, see people telling you in you know your dms or whatever how they've applied something that you taught and yeah to me that's like what it's all about that's really cool um hey guys so we're coming up to the end here and we have a little thing called ask an artist where the audience just sends in questions and the one for today it's pretty broad but this person wants to know what are your goals felix and dina um Felix, what are your goals? <laughs> that, or, uh, <laughs> now, um, okay, um, I, 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 I know what my goals are. So I interviewed this artist a while ago. His name is Bert Silverman. He's 94. And he um, had these paintings behind him. And, you know, they're really good. And, like, he's still painting every day. He lives in this multi-generational household with, like, I think, you know, his, one of his kids and I, probably several grandkids. And he's surrounded by people he loves and he paints all day. And I think I want to be just like him. Like the, that's, that's my goal. I want to be Bert Silverman. The, um, like I want to be 94 and still excited about painting and like still in love with it. The, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great answer. Um, and that is a goal. Is that in general or like just with art? Is it just, it just with art, right? So there's, you know, all these much more boring child related goals like to raise them into, you know, just kind, responsible, you know, um, kind of strong, strong people that um, as a, um, who maybe spend like a little bit more time, you know, helping others and a little bit less time, like whacking each other with sticks is, is, is a really little, like, I mean, that's why they <laughs> whack each other with sticks. <laughs> um, but, um, the, um, but, but there's sort of like the family goals, which is, which is just trying to help my kids kind of you know, like you can't shape your kids into anything. This is what I realized. Like they're just going to be whoever they are. Uh, but trying to a make sure they don't self destruct in the process of becoming whoever they are, um, and and just you know like trying to basically like raise good humans and be a good human for them, um, and be like you know just a good person for like my family, like my parents, my grandma you know, the, um, my friends, and then there's like the art goals. And that's definitely to be that 94 year old who's, you know, um, still painting. <laughs> yeah, I think for, yeah, I think for the art, art goal, I, I, I would agree with you. I think if, if I just start, like, if I stop experimenting, I feel like I'll lose that passion, you know? And so like, I, for me, I just don't want to lose that, like, excitement to play with things and materials and, experiment and I would love to do that when I'm old too you know and not lose that I also would love to make some music just music you know my goal is to have a little studio and make my own original music just music you know um, that's that's my goal for the art side of things you know but yeah that's about it you wanted to say something? I was just gonna say we kind of talked about this today actually for you I mean one I just thought of as you were saying that you want to uh take a little step back and care less about social media and care more about your art yeah yeah for sure no I think <laughs> like for for like the art like I just um sometimes a lot of the times like um I get exhausted like with trying to keep up and 
just the whole internet stuff and um and i just get tired because it's it's we're not trained no one really teaches you it's so new to all of us that like nobody tells you the after effects of you know using that for several years right um and so it's like it kind of get weighs you down a bit so like i would love to just create without uh, having a camera you know next to me <laughs> and just be in the studio and not worry about it you know like i actually, I actually keep the i mean I, I record the stuff with my phone but i i you know i have like so I, this is terrible. I have like an old phone that's, you know, runs out of batteries after like an hour and a half of use. And at some point I got a new one that, you know, it's like a fancy iPhone that doesn't run out of batteries, but I never changed the SIM card. So basically that, that fancy one, I just, you know, like I like have that in my studio and I make, you know, like once an hour, I take a break and like film for a few seconds, uh, but it doesn't actually have you know, like, like, it, you know, it doesn't actually work as, as like a distraction device. <laughs> um, and then my old phone is like, you know, still runs out of batteries every hour and 15 minutes now. Um, as a, so I can't, you know, uh, but like, I don't want it anywhere around me. Like, I don't want it, you know, like if I'm, if I'm painting, um, I don't want any device that has the internet on it, like, you know, where, where I can see it. Uh, you know, the one upside of the new algorithm, like this kind of current incarnation is that, uh, if you make one video that goes viral, that will get you more sort of like more eyeballs on your work. Like it'll get, you know, um, like it'll get your work more, like out there more than like seven posts that are just, you know, sort of, you know, that are, that are just like average engagement. So if you make one really like, yeah, but, but like, um, like one, uh, like sometimes like if I know something is going to go viral, like I can tell after it's been up for like a day or two, then I just sort of screw social media for the rest of the week because I'm like, it's, it's just going to do its thing. It's going, you know, that's nice. That's good yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's you, you know, you shared a lot of good stuff with us and I loved hearing your story, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's deeper, you know, much more deeper, interesting stories you have and and uh we don't have all the time but we would love to have you back maybe in the future and uh you know get to know you even better and you would be able to hopefully share more you know interesting stories because i'm sure you have a lot to share with us and but we really appreciate you sharing today with us and being actually with us. you know i would love to like sort of I feel like hearing more about your life. Like I, I, I'm usually on the other side of like the podcast equation. Like I ask the question and someone else goes on and being, you know, being, being the ones that like, you know, is allowed to talk a lot. I think I just, you know, chatter too much. So feel free to edit like anything out that you don't want, you know, in there. Oh, no, I, I thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I, there, there were some really good pointers and um encouraging um you know uh your test your your test your story itself is very encouraging because you came from belarus you know coming here to america um yeah i came from russia too when i was seven and so like we grew up like not so you know wealthy and so we had to it, it you know work hard to achieve and and get where we are and so <laughs> your story you know like you're it's very encouraging because you you've been through so much and you have a family you know and and so like to see you successful uh, you know um, I bet where, where, where do you come where do you come from felix uh rastov, rastov. rastov. <laughs> that, yeah that's a rough place like like that's it's, 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 you know i mean minsk was no picnic either but rastov is actually i think at some point it was the crime ca crime capital of russia it was like it's, it's basically the mafia capital of russia it's actually part of the mafia <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the funny story is uh, when my dad was uh, in the army, he he was drafted, you know, back in the day, uh, mm -hmm. you had to serve two years. And my dad uh, served and he, um, you know, he was, he was like, he worked hard, you know, and he was trying to be because we're Christian, you know, my family's Christian. And, and so my dad didn't want to pick up a gun. And he was, he was respectful of others. And and very like, uh, but he didn't want to be like treating people bad, you know, so but he was very doing, doing his work, like obedient and doing his thing. And anyway, after the two years, this gangster guy, maf mafia dude, and he's loaded, this guy was rich. And he's like, hey, I, I you know, watching you, um, uh, you know, the way you were, I, I, uh, 
I just have a, I have this job for you. Like, it's a really good job. It's in Moscow. <laughs> and he's like, it's, it's all you have to do. You're going to have, you're going to have like bodyguards following you all over. You're going to be protected. You're going to have a mansion. You're going to, your family's going to be taken care of. I just really love your personality and your hard work ethic. If you just come work with us, you know, and my dad was like, he was offered by He's this like, mafia, right, kids, you know. Let's move to America. <laughs> and so my dad could have taken that, but he's he chose not to go that route, you know. What was the what was the job? <laughs> um it's I I can't I, I can't my dad told me, but I can't really remember what it was made focused mainly on. I'm gonna have to ask him again and hopefully next podcast i'll say it um, <laughs> but i don't remember it you know but it was something you know something mafia. sketchy yeah <laughs> um it, oh, god, oh god i'm so curious i don't know i think now you'll you'll have to like write me what it what it was <laughs> okay. uh, I, I think one of one of my dad's army buddies kept trying to start various businesses that you know most of which failed um until the one that succeeded and now they own like half of armenia i, I think but um one of the ones that failed uh, in the early 90s was um, he called it the, the hot banana business and he um, he bought a bunch of bananas where I, I mean they weren't like available um, and I, I, I don't know when you, if like when you were growing up they were but bananas were were not a thing in Belarus and I think the one time that like you know but like like like, like you could buy bananas people stay you know stood in lines for like three days and you got these kind of black, you know, semi rotted bananas. And it's the most exciting thing. But so this guy decided that he's going to get bananas where they were available and put them in a refrigerator truck and, you know, drive them down to Moscow. And apparently um, he like didn't give the truck driver the right kind of bribe or maybe it was an honest mistake or, you know, the, like he didn't know how to operate this business. And instead of turning the refrigerated kind of like, 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 you know, there's a refrigeration on, he turns his driver, turns the heat on. So by the time, you know, this truck full of bananas got to Moscow, it was this kind of this banana stew. And I believe oh. the guy lost like, you know, it, like that car, the current version of the family fortune, which he borrowed from a bunch of his relatives. Though. Oh wow. man, that could have been like, he could have made it, turned it into a banana bread business. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no banana bread in Russia either. You know you know this. Yes, so yes. I actually know the bananas are were rare and uh, uh and oranges like the apelsini, the big ones, you know. Yeah, I never had an orange until we were um uh, so we didn't come straight to the U.S. We did that kind of like right before like the immigration route through Europe where you just you know stay in each country until you get documents to go to the next country and the first capitalist place that we ended up in was austria and uh where you could get bananas at any like street market and we got so many of them and we ate them all and it was like our first day out of belarus was like one massive digestive you know uh, disaster um be, 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 because it was this incredibly rare precious thing and all of a sudden we could just have pretty much as much as we wanted <laughs> And yeah, I never had an orange or an avocado. Like all, like all of these things seemed so exotic back then. Yeah, yeah that's so that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, you guys have a mutual love for oranges and bananas. <laughs> I, I still do. Do you, do you, are you still into them? Because I, I still am. <laughs> yeah, Felix loves them. I'm like, I'm not a big fan of bananas. Because I think for you, it was probably, the, you know, like it was something you could have whenever. So, you know, it's, it's not nearly as exciting. Like my, my father says his dream as a child was just to have as much orange juice as he wanted. Like the, um, and, you know, yeah, like, like supermarkets seemed like, you know, for the first like little while when, when we were in the U.S., um, it seemed insane that you, you could have a place with like 20 different types of yogurt and, you know, yeah. the, yeah that's man that's crazy yeah we're blessed definitely to be here um well dina thank you so much you know like really we enjoyed your time today thank yes. you um thank you so much i'm gonna go talk harry potter with my 97 year old grandma but, um which which is also a blessing like like she's you know my, my kids are have been into harry potter and she's been into harry potter so i either talk about it with like a six-year-old or i talk about it with a 90 97 year old that and, and both have like an amazing perspective so that's great <laughs> all right 
Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for um, joining us. And thank you to the Color by Felix audience for joining us as well. Be sure to check out Dina's artwork at, at Dina Brodsky and check out her art business uh, Instagram, of course, and sketchbook course. <laughs> thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. You guys are delightful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Right. Thank you, we'll, we'll see you soon again. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll come back for part two where I'm like less you know frazzled. Okay. No, it Thank was you. great. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. Bye. Take care, Dina. Bye.